Okay, in this video, we're going to take you through the process to create a solid model and then move that solid model into VCarve Pro so that you can end up developing what would become a positive or a positive negative mold creating application. Uh, in this particular instance, we're going to be looking to create a positive. Uh, as you can see in front of me uh, on the screen is the Penn State uh, Nittany Lion logo. And we're looking to create this so that we can, in the end, cast a chocolate bar of the Nittany Lion logo. Um, to begin with this process, what we would uh, start with is to locate uh, whatever image we're looking to create uh, a logo for that would be then embossed uh, or engraved into our chocolate. And we're going to go ahead and find that from the internet. So as you start hunting through, we're looking for uh, logos that are what we would consider clean. And that means logos such as this black and white logo, that if we were going to go ahead and uh, take a look at this logo, we want something nice and clean uh, with as little background noise as possible, uh, something that is easily traced or can be converted from a raster to a vectored image. So what we'll do at this point is we're going to save this to our server or to our desktop, save image, and we're then use this logo uh, in our application process. So I already have a logo saved up here. We'll go ahead and save this in here again. So we have a secondary one and we'll start moving forward. With the logo, we're gonna jump into Inventor and you can see what we're gonna attempt to create here. This is gonna be a solid model of the actual chocolate piece without the logo. So what we wanna do is develop just an idea of how large of a a chocolate piece that we want to create. So what I have here in front of me, if I uh, jump into the sketch here and take a look, uh, what we have is a three inch uh, long uh, piece of chocolate, which is actually a fairly large piece of chocolate um, uh, uh, for a logo. And then from that point, we then move through the sketching process and the extrusion process. So let's go ahead and walk through that right now. So I'm gonna just go up here and do file, we'll do new, and we'll start a new standard IPT. And we'll hit 2D sketch. At this point, we'll go ahead and set up a plane. And now I want to go ahead and bring in that image. Uh, that way I can kind of sketch over top of that image to get the right shape that I'm looking for. So we're going to go ahead and pull that image up here to the image tab. And we'll go ahead and find where we have this thing saved off, which I think I believe I stuck it on my desktop underneath of Choco Bar. And we can probably pull either one of these. I'll just pull this one for now and zoom out. I'm going to drop it somewhere here in centered. And <clears throat> image doesn't look like that's going to work, so let's delete that one. And might have to go back to the internet and find a secondary image uh, if that one's not going to work. But so what we'll do is we'll jump back in and we'll use a second image that I pulled in here. And we'll go ahead and pull that one in. And again, we'll zoom out, center things up, and drop the image. As you can see now, this image is coming in. And what we're really trying to do is understand the size and the shape of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension from one side of this image to the other side to just get an idea of scale and size. Right now, this thing is 12.5 inches, obviously way too large. So we'll go ahead and just change this thing up to, say, 3. And now we have a sizable image that we can work with to work with a piece of chocolate. So with that set up, we'll go ahead and start sketching uh, our ellipse. We'll pull down the what would be the circle tool, and we'll find the ellipse tool. Because this is an ellipse, it doesn't necessarily need to be an ellipse. You can make a chocolate bar out of pretty much anything. Uh, so we'll find the center of this part by mousing back and forth and around, and Inventor will help find the center of the image. We'll work out to the length first and zoom in and get as close as we can here to an accurate size and then we'll come up to find the height so we'll get as close and then again select and now we have a sketch so what we're going to do now is uh, we don't necessarily need this image anymore at all so we can probably even get rid of it uh, to clean things up so now we'll go ahead and extrude so i'll hit finish sketch and i'll grab my extrude tool now it's necessary that when you start working with molds to think about the idea of a taper. Uh, a mold, in order to pull the, the actual product out of the mold uh, itself, having a taper is, uh, is a good idea. So if we were to set this up with, say, a 10% taper, uh, that's gonna help a lot with pulling things out. 
We'll go ahead and set the distance at 0.25 because a quarter inch thick piece of chocolate is a nice uh, size piece of chocolate. So we got a 10 inch taper at a quarter inch and we hit OK. So now we've got the rough shape that we can work with to start looking at the uh, process of cutting this thing out. So we'll go ahead now and take this thing to a um, solid object that we can open up in B-Carve. Uh, so we'll go up here to the Environments tab. We'll hit Environments. We'll hit 3D Print. And, um, oh, it says we got to save this thing first. So let's go ahead and save it. We'll save this thing to... We'll go put this back on the desktop under that Choco Bar folder. Drop it in here, and I'll just call this Penn State 2. I've never done this once before here today. All right. And now we're ready to go back through the environment process. We'll go back into the 3D print environment. We'll hit uh, save for the STL here. And now we're going to export this as a uh, Penn State 2 STL file. And we'll be able to take that into VCarve Pro. So now that that thing is out, we're going to end up going ahead and opening up VCarve Pro. Uh, if you don't already have the VCarve Pro uh, opened up, you can always search it down here in your uh, search window. Type in VCarve. And what you're going to get here is VCarve Pro 9.0. Uh, if you have one open, great. If you don't, you can open another one up. All right, now with the VCarve uh, Pro open up, we can go ahead and bring our object into uh, VCarve. So we'll go ahead and start. We're going to create a new file here because uh, we're going to start up a new file. And we're now thinking about the size of the chocolate bar. So we're three inches uh, wide, roughly. So if I just set up a five uh, width by five height and we'll go ahead and set that thickness right now to be 0.25 because that's how thick the object will be that we cut first to create our positive and as we come down through uh, we're working down standard date and position the XY coordinate so all will be fine we hit OK so now that we have our uh, workspace uh, we can work inside of this area here now we got to go ahead and bring in that part so we're gonna go ahead and hit file and we'll slide down here to import and then we want to import component 3D model. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then that's when we want to go ahead and find that STL file. It's going to my desktop already, Choco Bar, and then Penn State 2, and hit open. So what this is doing, this is the orientation uh, of our 3D model part. So you can see uh, what's happening here. Looks like this thing is actually upside down because I want the taper uh, to be at the top. So I need to rotate this thing around. So what I'm going to do uh, is start looking at this rotation process. What you can see here is all it's doing is turning. So that's not going to work for me. So i got to find the correct rotation to work this to flip this thing around. So what I'm going okay, so to do here is go ahead and hit bottom. And then I can see that this has been flipped upside down here. So it's clear that the taper is now uh, facing up and that I'm ready to start moving back down through the orientation here. So we got an interactive rotation. All the coordinates here are locked. We're looking at that three inch or 3.05 to because of the taper. And then we're coming through here. I do not want to get rid of anything below the zero plane. So we're going to be all set here. Uh, I don't need to check anything and hit OK. So what that's done now is created my solid that I can now start looking at bringing in the uh, Penn State logo so that I can start setting up uh, my tool paths to the start the cutting process. So what I'll do is start talking about the cutting process and tool paths and all the like in the second video.